Hello everyone and welcome to week 6 of the MLS. We've had a little bit of change of schedule today and also a change in caster. Hello Adam. Oh, that's sad. He's now... Oh no, there he is. And now with Adam. Sorry Adam, I was in the wrong room for that intro. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was unexpected. <laughs> that's alright. I... I did the intro, I was like, and Adam, and then he oh. just didn't say anything, and I was like, oh, shit. Made me jump. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I'm here. Yeah, so change of schedule, we were meant to have Adam's team versus Weebie Woo, but unfortunately, Weebie Woo couldn't get a team together today, so who have we got instead, Adam? We have teammate versus Blue Bin Boomers. Nice. So, a good one Which... to look forward to. Who, whereabouts are they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's more interesting than I think you give it credit for. Uh, team 8 are sitting in 8th place, uh, you know, going towards their namesake. Blue Bin Boomers are in 6th, so they are actually hovering at the playoff spot. If they lose a couple of games, um, obviously they risk dropping. But Team 8 won their first game last week, so they're coming off of a, well, I don't know what you'd call it, like a confidence boost maybe? Yeah, I'm just kind of sad I missed that. Um, yeah, so it, what was, it was the highlight? It was spectacular. Well, I, I was actually going to... I was about to link it to you before the stream started. Um, they, they, Ari, uh, I mean, I'm currently in the thing. It's, it's at 14 minutes in the game, and he's 15 and 0 with 25 stacks on Magi's. This, uh, this infused shadow apparently destroyed on Ari, so I'm expecting an Ari ban. Yeah. For sure. And hopefully big things out of out of the mid laner again. But we are into pick and bans already. Leeson off the table and Diana, of course. The Diana rework has left her in a pretty powerful spot. Mm, even after the changes they did to the Ardent Sensor on her shield, she's still very, very strong. Mm -hmm. And of course Leeson, just a good standard ban. Uh, I've not seen Kakashi play before. Is Kakashi new to this team? I don't Kakashi know. subbing for Tintin this week. Very good. Uh, that cow ban aimed at Urza there. Clearly a target ban because Urza is a widely known. I think the only cow user in the tournament, actually. But he's very, very good on that champion. And the Lux ban is definitely targeted at L. I don't know how you said the full name. I only ever called her L in the mid lane for Blue Bin Boomers. She plays a lot of Lux. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely a good target ban. Is there anything else we expect? You know, obviously Urza's been known as somewhat of a one trick <laughs> most of his mm. league uh, mls career is there anything outside well, that kale uh, yeah 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 definitely he's a big set player so if they don't have an answer for the set and they hand it over you're going to be seeing i think probably set picked in top lane it's still a really strong pick even after the nerfs right so you don't you don't subscribe to uh enders uh lec enders uh, just walk away mentality <laughs> I mean, you can just walk away, but if they're at Dragon and Baron, you're walking away from quite a big objective. So, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think I agree with Ender there. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, the Poppy pickup, uh, presumably going into the top lane, just a safe blind pick, you reckon? No, no, no. That Poppy is going into the jungle. Oh. I know that Kakashi plays two main champions in the jungle. He plays Poppy and he plays Olaf. So that is for sure going into the jungle. Nice. Well, I'm excited to see that. I've not seen a Poppy Jungle. Uh, oof. Maybe since the, since all the AP Poppy, when you could occasionally mm. break it out. Yeah, she's still a uh, you know reasonably strong jungler because even after everything coming out of jungle, you have a very tanky Poppy with lots of utility and a fairly decent clear speed. So, although she's not the most impactful, you know her ganks aren't particularly mm. strong. Um, what you are doing is you're securing yourself a late game scaling tank in the jungle position, which is great because often you have to put your tanks in top lane. So this should free Jack up to play something a little bit more fighty. Yeah, I'm sure he'll appreciate that. Uh, Grey Jungle banned out, of course. Uh, so Infused Shadow has got his hands on the Ari. Um, that's exciting to see. Uh, that's very exciting, yeah. yeah. Against the Ziggs as well, uh, something that, you know, if caught out of position, doesn't really have any escape from the charm. Mm, not really. Of course, the poppy is somewhat of a counter to the RE uh, to try and stop her getting onto the backline, perhaps. 
Uh, yeah, I didn't think about that, but yeah, you are right. The only saving grace is that if you block the first one, she's going to have two more, so. <laughs> yeah, as long as she doesn't get locked down uh, too quickly. We'll see if yeah, any yeah. more CC does come out the side of Blue Moon Boomers, because at the moment they don't really have much at all, uh, of course. The double engaged ban on the side of teammate was quite intelligent, I would argue, because you've got the Nami and the Senna. You don't really want anybody who's going to click on your head. Yeah. Uh, Thresh, I guess a bit a bit of a just a toned down version of Leona and Nautilus with a little bit of mm -hmm, intimacy mm -hmm. else otherwise. Uh, For sure, yeah. And giving a little bit of survivability in case Yari pops on anybody. You can always lantern away. So that's the top laner indeed left for last for Jack. So I... I would have bet big money that Jack would have taken that counter pick on the red side, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, set still open. That's an Ivern jungle. The Ivern to... jungle. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For my name's Jack. Are we, are we just going to have to call him Jack? Is that going to be confusing? Mm, no, we can we can refer to Ursa. And then we can refer to my name's Jack. I think that's probably the intelligent way. But uh, Ivern, I, I can't even remember what that champion does. And a Mundo as well. Okay, two champions I don't remember. So, so Ivern has the the root on the on the queue, I believe. Um, as we yeah, do get the just, set. Just let interject. There's yeah, the set. Yeah. I told you he would come. So Ivern's got the root on the queue. Uh, I think it's the W is the bit where he preps a jungle camp, sacrificing bullet, some bullet, bullet shield or something, isn't it? With w. Oh, W's no W's the bushy bushy, right? Because he placed down a bush on his W. Yes. Yes, yes. And then the E is the bullet shield. That's, that's, kind of that's a bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, his passive is the whole jungle camps, uh, sacrifice some mana and health. Yeah, um, yeah, the, the vegetarian champion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the jungle changes actually hurt him quite a bit with uh, the much faster respawn rates. Um, okay, because I guess his passive doesn't change, so... No. So it leaves mm. him in a bit of a bad spot. Um Although his invades are still very strong, I imagine, because he can just walk in and take a buff. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. So of course. I wonder if there's anything clever being lined up for the level one. You'd have to think so. Poppy probably isn't the fastest level one clear, I don't, <laughs> I'd imagine. Mm. I used to play Ivan about three seasons ago, and I remember one of the clears you could do, and I don't know whether it's still relevant, but you would you would prep your own blue and grump, and then you would just go and do their red with your smite, and then you'd wander back into your own, your own jungle. So... I don't know if you can get a because I'm imagining if we are struggling. I mean, you may not, but if I'm struggling to know what Ivan's roots would be in the jungle, does that mean Blue Bin Boomers are going to have the same sort of problem? You assume so. I mean, it's, you definitely don't see him much anymore. Um, I mean, the counter can be said. We'll see if uh, Jack on this Ivan has much knowledge about Poppy Jungle either. Um, mm. So it could be an interesting little back and forth. Mm -hmm. Curiously. Um, I would argue that, I mean, I, I, know, I understand Set is quite a big counter to tanks because he can obviously suplex them into the team, but um, they don't have an awful lot of tank killing potential, do they? Because Misfortune isn't an auto attacker. Ziggs is a poke champion. So if Mundo does scale enough, do you think they'll have trouble killing him? Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, I definitely think so. And um, I mean, on the flip side, you know, Senna is also not the biggest tank killer, um, but Poppy and Set, uh, the Set especially, is, you know, a, a brawler more than a, a pure tank. Um, you can just wait out that shield if you need to, as long as you can kite a bit. And with an army mm. and with an Ivan, maybe you can. Um, and Poppy in the jungle, you know, we definitely expect it to, to build tanky. Uh, with the state that junglers are in, it's not like you're going to be able to get some kind of brawler. I can't see any <laughs> other build path for Poppy, no. No, definitely not. Uh, I okay. The question that I always hear Tom and Craig ask each other: Which team do you prefer? You know what? I I think it's probably a little bit more simple for Team Eight here. Um, they just kite back, kite back with Senna um, at range. Uh, you know, Mundo and Ivern trying to slow down, and then they just use Ari to come in around the back and um, and get picks onto what's going to be very immobile Ziggs or Misfortune. Uh, mm. Whereas, I mean, if you if you're gonna, sorry, you carry on. I'll, yeah, I'll I was just thinking, whereas with Blue Bin Boomers, you, you know, you're look. I guess you're looking for a bit of a wombo comp, um, but you don't have a lot of setup for the wombo. You know, you don't have a Jarvan in the jungle or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you have, if anything, an anti wombo in in Poppy. 
Um, let's hope we don't see any yeah. <laughs> poppy old algorithm. It's curious, isn't it? Because you have, a, you have a bit of a contest here between what looks to be a very clear team comp on team eight, because I agree with you, you have a clear carry in the center. And if she gets ahead, it's going to be very hard for anyone to kill her because you have the bullet shield, which I remember is on a very low cooldown. You have the roots on the either, you have the slows on the mundo, you have the Nami just doing Nami things. So the plan is very clear to pull off, which I think a team like Team 8 is going to benefit from because obviously I think clear calls win games. Yeah. On Blue yeah. Boomer's side, you have more raw skill, I would argue, but they have a much more complicated and disorganized team comp because they don't really have an engage um they have parts of a wombo i agree not a full wombo because it's basically secretly misfortune but they're they're very open to getting picked by the ari because there's no pill for misfortune no, no. pill for zeke's well so not at all basically it's the poppy ult trying to peel them but i mean trying to hit an ari with a poppy ult is like that Good sounds luck to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so and I really, guess... Poppy's job shouldn't be doing that. Poppy's job should be dive buddy, shouldn't it? You, I can't imagine. I can't imagine Blue Bin Boom is going to benefit from a front to back team fight without um, having some sort of a strong, um, you know, engage because you've got much tankier members on Team Eight to kind of start that. And you've got the Ivan shields refreshing constantly and the heals from the Nami and the heals from the center I, I just think the fight they don't they don't want to take that kind of a fight I think they need Poppy in the back line stopping that center doing damage yeah uh I, I guess the setup for the big wombo combo is set coming in and taking uh and presumably the mundo, mundo but maybe the Ivan mm -hmm. uh coming in getting a big stun on the back line between the mundo and you know the center Absolutely. or the Nami yeah, and then yeah. it comes through but that's not an for easy sure setup. For sure, I agree with you. I think that I think that if Set can grab the 5k health Mundo and dump him on the back line, he'll probably one shot the team. Yep. Because that ult does ridiculous damage with a health scaling champion. And Mundo is a health scaler, isn't he? Because of yeah, his yeah. regen, he wants that percentage health. But if he can't find that Mundo, that Mundo is <clears> not going to die. Um <clears throat> that's gonna be Mundo with an ult running, presumably. And then Senna heals coming through, and maybe even Nami heals coming through if something like um, the Nami's healing off Senna, bouncing forwards, possibly, and coming back again to Mundo. Just loading in. Yeah. I need to put it into game. Also, Sammy or Ataraxia, I should probably say, has got her Nami. And that is actually one of her main champions. So she's on a she's on a bit of a comfort pick there. The set uh buying the three Reju of Bees because he knows that Mundo has no all in potential. So quite a clever Maya. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. As soon as hang on, I've not got the items up. O and U, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> nice. Cool. Um Yeah, oh <coughs> triple region beat. Yeah, so that's just he's wanting to stay up top as long as he can. Um and really delay that back and try and shove in this Mundo onto turret and deny him some farm. Yeah, I mean, the other win condition for Bluebeam Boomers is if they can get a lead in the early game, they can just push down towers with the Ziggs because there's not a whole lot of wave clear on the side of teammate. You know, Ari has a Q. Um, Senna doesn't really have any wave clear. Yeah. And Mundo has zero wave clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Misfortune, while she's not good at auto attacking in team fights because of the way her passive works on the love taps, uh, she can actually push push away pretty fast um, and mm. do damage to turrets and the other threat is that if thresh lands a hook under tower on a siege you have a zigzag and an misfortune ult to wipe somebody out in like an impromptu tower dive yeah 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 i, I can see that happening um, <coughs> the thresh can always get brave follow that hook in and lands in the set or something something crazy but that's probably suicide 
So Poppy doing the full Gromp clear of her side of the jungle. Um, she's aiming for that early level four. Ivan, I'm not even going to bother trying to reason what he does. I don't understand what Ivan's clear is. So it looks like he's prepped his red buff, right? And he's gone straight to his... Uh, sorry, his blue buff and gone straight to his red buff and smited that. He's prepped all of his blue side. He's smited his red side. And now he's doing Raptors. And now he's going to walk back to his blue side and start taking those. Okay, nice interesting. Nice amount of be, It'd be interesting, to to be interesting to see how fast he is compared to the poppy clear. Because you can sort of compare them on the minimap. Mm. No, we already saw some good uh, good poke out from, from Yari there onto Ziggs. Taking down L to a third HP, really. Um, the prop from that electrocute doing good work in the early game. Yeah, and I think um, Arvin's going to... Ar uh, sorry, Ziggs is going to have to be really careful in that matchup because if she does go too low and that six pops, it's uh, you really don't want Arvin getting ahead. Especially not after he showed what he could do with it in last week's games. Yeah, uh, be interested if he... If he's confident enough to go for a Magi's against, you know, a team that's mechanically skilled as Blue Bin Boomers, who can, True. you know, just find find the, the odd outplay pick on you. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it's not enough to win them games sometimes. And I will, I will say, actually, so Reaper 900 is the brother of Lick Me Lid, the captain of Big Chungus. A small bit of trivia there. A good trade down at the bottom. I don't think anyone was really in trouble. The heal did come out from the center. As oh, Earth is big fight. <gasps> and he does get first blood. The W actually <laughs> some very good range. And then Mundo flashes out there. Uh, better looking on the Poppy to not stop that flash using her W E ability. Um, so, a little known thing about Urza is that he talks quite easily. So, the fact that he's just lost a 1v1 to a Mundo. Um, I'm wondering about the state of his uh, mental game right now. Oh, he's a tilter, you say? I, I mean, I'm not saying he's a tilter, but um, I'm pretty sure if you look up a definition in dictionary, you'll have his uh, portfolio, or what's it called? Profile picture. So. Yeah. Uh, well, is that even... But sorry, my, my point that was running as well is the trivia about Reaper 900 is, although he's Jamie's brother, um, He's, I think he doesn't play ranked all that much. Uh, so I think he's a rank, he's something like bronze. But he played... Nice bubble onto the Thresh, and now Senna getting some free shots off from at distance. Misfortune tried to peel away, but now Senna coming forwards. Out of mana, so isn't going to have any more Qs coming through. And the Thresh does, in the end, manage to walk away. No summon has burned apart from the Ignites on Nami. Yeah, worthwhile, I think, because... Uh, who was it that I was watching in the LEC last week that said... Sometimes just burning Ignite is enough to make the enemy back off because they, they psychologically hear the sound of the Ignite and they, even if they're going to win a trade, the sound makes them realise there's an all-in coming, so they instinctively back off a fight. Oh, well, so there's, there's, yeah, there's a little bit of psychology in using the Ignite for stopping a fight. Yeah, a little Pavlovian danger, danger response. I, yeah, I, I, think, I think there's some truth in it too. Push out here. Um, glancing down, although Urza did give up first blood, he is 20 CS ahead. Um, Very far ahead, yeah. I I'm determined to finish my point. So Reaper 900 won a tier one clash tournament with some of the other MLS slot as well. So he's very used to playing against higher level AD carries. Okay. So he knows how to play safe. Then. But here comes Ivan. They come in with Urza. Drags them in, gets a W1, and Ivan just moving out, but I think Mundo here is going to be a goner. He'll throw a little axe backwards and will start to run away, but I mean, possibly his minions will even finish him first, <laughs> as it does get the last punch in. Yeah, that's, that's quite big for us to get the return kill, I think. Yeah, I mean, we can have a quick, quick check on the gold, even, uh, and we can see that Urza is actually. 300, nearly 400 gold ahead. Uh, in six minutes, you know, not a huge amount, but that, that is a ruby crystal or something when it comes to trades. Because Reaper just making sure Slap and Tickle stays honest, poking him out the jungle, uh, out the bot lane, and he will have to follow his AD carry now back to the Phantom. Yeah, um, 
Poppy at the moment hasn't had much impact on the game. However, as I say that, she's about to gank. Yeah, here she comes. Just a little bit of chip damage onto the RE. Not, as we said in the uh, in the preview to the game, not much Poppy can actually do in the setup uh, other than make sure that the RE can't dash away. But with Ziggs not close enough, not really much was going to come from that. Oh, the charm lands. Just feels like poke back and forth though still. No one oh, really and the all in coming in. Ignite down onto the Ziggs. Ari having to flush away out of the Mega Inferno Death Bomb. Ignite used and barrier. That was all summoners from both and the ultimates. Um, I would argue that all summoners being burned is in Ari's favor. Yeah, I generally agree. Although the barrier is on a shorter cooldown. Um, true, true. However, oh. I think... Ziggs is going to have to play exceptionally careful for the next little four minutes until those summoners are back up. Because hmm. Ari's ult is already one third ready. Yeah, we'll see if Ivern decides to pay some attention perhaps to the mid lane, uh, try and cash in on, on those blown summoners. Um, and we'll see if, I guess, Kakashi decides that he needs to babysit his Ziggs. There's a fight in the jungle. Yeah, they're fighting each other in the jungle. But <laughs> Ivan versus Poppy, a bit of a, just a, a slap fest between the two of them. <laughs> I can't see much happening. No. Um, this spot lane is steadily going in Blue Bean Boomer's favour. You can see a 20 CS lead there building up for uh, um, Max and Slap and Tickle. I mean, they will eventually get outscaled by the Senna, so I think they need this lead. Um, but it's nice to see they've still got it. Yeah. 20 CS is, is a lot for this early in the game. Um, and Senna, That's a huge lead. Senna, you know, isn't a bad farmer and should farm relatively safely. It's part of what makes her a top tier pick at the moment is that she scales, but uh, unlike, well, I mean, not Vayne anymore, but how Vayne used to be. As the ult comes out from Misfortune, that's tearing through Reaper and Nami. And the oh, fantastic the play. Even yeah, though really good play. They couldn't see her properly through the Senna Ghouls. That love tap doing big damage with the BF sword. I just don't think teammate respected the damage potential. <laughs> Slap and Tickle getting what felt like a, a weird full combo, which you don't say much about Thresh, but now Daisy chasing him down. Will we go for the Misfortune, who is pretty low? Takes. Oh, oh here comes the Ari, though. Ari. Charm down onto the Thresh. It One kill. Has she got, she got no ult left? I think all her ult's been used, yeah. yeah all her ult was used, no flash. Um, Misfortune did nice. burn flash and heal though. Nice roam though, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think Ivan had that on his own. Uh, the lands now, and Ari managing to close the gap, burning all of her ult charges in the process. So Blue Bin Boom has uh, built up about a 2,000 gold lead. None of the teams have been very interested in Drake yet. I mean, it is an ocean Drake, so I would have thought that it would have been quite... Oh, and as I say that again, they're about to do it. Yeah. I'm going to see if Ziggs wants to come down. Thresh and Poppy are in the area. Um, oh, my butthole's clenching. My butthole's clenching. Ivan not known for his dragon taking speed. <laughs> he will get started. Oh, no. No way came over the wall other than his flash, which is up. But here comes teammate. They are responding first. Yeah, that's the ults out from Senna and Nami. Bubble into the pit as Ivan has to flash out. They do now have the dragon in their grasps, though. Are we coming down? We've got no neither TPs in the top lane. Dragon goes down in the favour of Bluebin Boomers, and they just get harassed a little bit by the center on the way out. But they will take that cleanly, no deaths. A, uh, a good win uh, for Bluebin, uh, the Bluebin Boomers. Yeah, definitely. They... Oh, big hook from the Thresh there. Yeah, center and Misfortune down at the bottom side of the fight. Out and comes the bullet the time. Is... Taken out the arc. Ari, uh, the Nami, always a squishy champion. <laughs> it's not going to like that. Thresh lands another hook. Max looking for the kill. The double up comes through to get the reset on his autos. As Urza? Urza is... Uh oh, I see what he was going for. Gets the solo Very kill clever. on the Mundo. After, Very clever. After taking him out of turret range. So that's two, uh, well, three quick kills across the board. As Ari now trying to go in onto the Ziggs while on low health. He's going to get away having to dodge the Q. No cooldown on Mega Inferno bottom. That leaves Ziggs very low as well. But nothing across the board. 
Do you think uh... a lot of action in the last sort of four minutes? And I think most of it's gone in Blue and Bemis' favour, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think uh, Ari could have got the kill there if they dropped the ignite? I think, I'm not sure if you saw it, but her first tick of her ult got interrupted by the satchel charge. Ah. Um, I don't know if you saw it, so she only had two to use for the fight. I think if she'd have successfully dodged that satchel charge, that would have been one dead six. I don't think the ignite would have been enough to kill the six. Because yeah. he did have barrier. Yeah, yeah. Ivan trying to come in for the lane gank. Uh, just pushing Zix back, uh, stopping too much turret damage going down with his passive. Under turret once again, as it does take a bit of damage on the backside of that yeah. jump. Shield I'm not sure that Mundo appreciates his own damage, there, to be honest. No, and as it only gets the big shield once he's got that grit really worked up. Um, There's a lot of cleavers being landed in this lane. Yeah. Oh, the big misfortune Q damage there. That's always upsetting when you get tagged by those. Uh, Senna shouldn't be in the in the worst <coughs> spots though. Nami and Senna together should be able to heal through that kind of damage. I mean, a four thousand gold lead at thirteen minutes is it's not great for teammate. Um, although Ivan is a level up and counter jungling, so Poppy has very little to do in her own jungle at the moment. Yeah, there's I, a risk I, she will fall behind. I mean, I guess the big question is what what can Blue Bin do, Boomers do with this lead? We said they they weren't particularly good at forcing. Um, do they need to split up and go for separate lanes? It's difficult. I think at the moment they're going to take bot tower fairly comfortably. Unless Ivan makes a big play, um, this bot lane's going to fall. And then the problem that Ooh, team go. 8... Charm missed. Yeah. Just some heavy trading going on. Once again, bullet time in the bot lane. This time, nowhere near enough oh. reverse. We'll oh. get locked up on the far side now. It's Ivan chasing with Daisy. Nami in the front line, Ivan goes straight down. Uh, the late ult out from Senna means that he didn't have a shield to hope. Ari goes down in the mid lane, and now Senna should be able to clean up this Thresh, you think, as the Nami roll hits once again. This should just be a fairly easy cleanup with no help coming, although it was the Poppy. <laughs> oh, the last auto from the Nami coming through, but now it's Poppy versus Senna after Poppy manages to clear out Nami. Top lane should be fine. I don't think anything's happening there, and in the end, that is a Two for two? I think. Yeah, it was a two for two, although Ziggs did kill Ari solo mid lane. Right. He's coming down now, and he's caught Reaper far too far pushed up. Poppy's there as well. There's no way he's getting out of this. <laughs> I said that, and then I thought that I saw the Ziggs bomb miss. I was worried for a second. Um, now we've got... I don't think Jack's going to be able to engage on that. There's a, there's a huge CS lead in top lane. 60 CS coming up for set there. Yeah. Two levels up in top lane. Yeah, even from that first blood when he was 20, 20 CS ahead, even though he was a couple <coughs> behind, he's done nothing but gain now. Um, mm, he's really pushing that lead. We do have a Mountain Drake coming up, which tells me that we might... There's a very good chance we're going to have the Triple Infernal, um, because it's going to be either Infernal or Cloud, isn't it? I don't think Cloud's going to do very much for... I don't think Blue Bean Boomers want the Cloud Drake. Looking at their ults, they're just not going to benefit very much from it. No, you don't think they... Ooh, there's once again under turret. That was just a little bit disrespectful from, from the window standing too far forwards. Not seeing the burst coming. Um, and now... Maybe. you taking sure. a 1v1 between Misfortune and Senna. <laughs> uh, I, I, maybe, may, I mean, she's red coloured. Maybe she looks like a minion. Maybe, uh, but you can't farm that. And now under turret, the flash having to be burned by Ivan is... Poppy takes a lot of turret shots and does in the end. You get taken down by the Ivan, I was worried it might be an execute. Now Ari going to clean up on the backside of this, takes out Misfortune. They're going to push on towards the Thresh, but Zig's hiding in the bush. <laughs> Instantly bursts the Ari, and Ivan now sees Ooh. he's bitten off more than he can chew. Who needs a Garen in the bush when you have a Ziggs in the bush? Eh? So this is the Mundo teleport coming through. He's going to... Oh, Tied he's going to get him. No, the satchel charge and the box are going to keep him safe. Yeah. He's popping the ult. He's really going for this. I don't... He's only got his level 1 ult. He's level 10. Yeah. It has TP'd in, though. All right. He's put TP into the middle of nowhere. And no, I mean, there's the bubble finally coming through. The big... Uh, what is this W called? <laughs> the, the smashy one. What, the big punch? Yeah. 
Um, I'm not sure. I just call it the big punch. Big punch. Uh, didn't manage to hit anyone with it for damage, but the shield did probably did keep him alive there. Um, Three level difference in top lane now. That's huge. So, I mean, what do you want to see then? Do you want to see uh, Urza off into a side lane? Uh, really? Urza, I think, needs to start splitting, yeah. Because um, even at this moment in time, Mundo is missing out on a huge wave in top lane. I don't think they're going to take the Drake here. Yeah. Well, they might have well, they're back enough. Yeah, I mean, teammates still have a very strong back-to-front team fight. Um, so whether or not they want to take this, I don't know. They do have the inside lane on mid. It might be worth just getting the inside lane taking that mid tower. Yeah, I think maybe the one thing holding back <clears throat> teammate at the moment is that Mundo just can't frontline with the, the point he's at. He's got a Sunfire cape, and that's about it. Um, uh, misfortune not and his exile will probably just shred through it before he can he can get anything done. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I just think teammate needs to scale up a little bit more. But, oh, okay, I don't think oh, I've ever missed that one. too deep. I've <laughs> going a little over Exuber in there. Although now misfortune as well has put us out far too far forwards and tried to ult through. Ziggs takes out the Nami in return, and we have a one for two. With Mundo still fairly healthy, the charm lands onto Urza again. He's going to take a lot of damage from the from the Ari. Cinderol keeping Mundo healthy, and the turret will take down Thresh on the backside. Another one for one, although you can see that Ziggs has got damage. Urza chasing through, <laughs> realized he was far too deep, and in the end, there's only one standing for teammate, two standing for Bluebin Boomers. Uh, with the help of Ziggs, though, they should be able to just get this turret. Um, such a charge. Now. Oh, okay, I thought that was still in range for it. Uh, it did, in fact, not quite take that down. It won't matter too much, though. I mean, congratulations on casting that, because <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that was quite something. Holy moly. Yeah, that was one one trade after another, wasn't it? But, I mean, in the end, it works out in teammates' favour. They extend that gold lead. They're now up to seven, 8,000 gold, nearly. Um, at 19 minutes, it, it's not looking great for teammate with a gold difference. Yeah. I think for teammate to come back into this, um, they're really going to have to stem this this gold flow heading in Blue Moon's direction at the moment. There's just far too much gold sitting in the pockets. You have a 4,000 gold difference between Misfortune and Senna. That's that's what five deaths and seven kills <laughs> will do for you. As the first you have Reptile a 3,000 gold difference between Set and Mundo. Um. That is the entirety of the gold difference, though. That is the, that is the 7k difference, uh, well, 8k <laughs> difference that we're seeing. Um, so, I mean, if you do manage to get a pick on that misfortune, which, I mean, we saw in that last team fight, it's probably why it was as close as it was. Uh, you know, if, if Max decides to ult from the front line, uh, which is generally considered inadvisable, um, she can be taken down. There's yeah. nice red buff steal, actually, from the center. Lands the Nami ult. A little bit, uh, maybe just expecting the engage to come through. Um, this is that uh, caught once again by Urza in the bot lane. Should be kept decently healthy by Reaper though. Um, they just need to make sure what you'll find. Big flash from, um, oh, and the center the guard side. coming in. All coming down. Doesn't really do damage to anyone. Reaper Miner are having, gonna have to back out of this fight completely though. And now that's. Most of their wave clear gone. Uh, what will they have? Is Six pops the ult under the turret. Urza goes down two sap though on the front side, or in fact to Ari. He's going to come go down in return. It's a one for one so far. Ivan having to run gets the root up on the poppy, which I think will keep him alive. And now we're going to see whether the uh, side of teammate can hold off Bluebin Boomers as they come in for this inhib turret. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean interesting fight overall. Oh, they have the Rift Herald, though. Yeah. That's going to help them crack the base for sure. There we go. That's taken. We'll see if they can usher it through to the in-hip now. It doesn't look like they will, though. Yeah. The uh, minion wave comes just in time. And now mm. Blue and Boom is going to back off. Uh, can you see how long it is till Dragon? Dragon... If you push N, it brings it up. Yeah. It's 1 minute 24. It hides behind my mini-map, though, so I can't see it. Oh, okay. It's 1, one minute 19 until, one minute until Dragon 19. now. So, uh... Probably looking for... You'll see the little icon pop in. The, I mean, just that I did in that fight, what you do notice, and I think one of the mistakes Jack made there, is although Set's kit is quite loaded, 
if he decides to use that punch a little bit too early, he you, he loses the shield ding on his kit. And I think probably what happened there is he used his offensive tools a bit early, left himself open, and just got bursted down without any access to that shield. Mm. Yeah, uh, you know, the Mundo Qs do still do decent damage um, at this point in the game. They'll, they'll probably start dropping off um, and becoming more utility um, mm -hmm. very soon. <clears throat> He does have access to his level 2 ult now, and once he gets that Spirit Resarge, I think he'll become a champion. Yeah, so that, that'll give him some resistances out, out from the Ziggs. And the healing will scale up by because of the Spirit Resarge gives the healing scaling, doesn't it? Yeah, 33%, I think, or...? I think so, yeah. It's a huge, it's huge... Oh my goodness. Yeah, Nami, cube... Nami needs to be careful. As Mundo's now stuck in the pit. Um... Mundo goes where he pleases. But he is probably going to have to for push Dragon out of pit. this one. Unless they decide to try and turn this, I wouldn't really recommend it. Although, Needs to damage hit. down onto this RA, <laughs> onto the uh, Poppy. Money now in the pit does still have Flash. Although, hooked out now. He's going to go down before he even gets a chance to. And now, Blue Boom uh, Boomers can turn around for this Cloud Drake, putting them uh, only one away from the soul. Set now going to be attempting a 2v1. Uh, a little bit early from that Ivan Q, not waiting until <laughs> Set was rooted in place to hit it. And he's going to clear up what may well be a 2v1. Suplex coming down, Ivan trying to flash away, and then a little combo out from Set, and he's cleared up as well. Are you going to try and pick this up on the backside? That is quite a lot of damage, and Urza is now mostly out of cooldowns. Oof. Oh, that orb very hit. close. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, Blue Beaver was a certain their dominance here. They won, I think, every fight this game. Um, they've secured the dragons. They've what an opening here, but our bot side on behalf of teammate, it's Ooh, they just they just eggs. down comes the Alton. Uh, that was cheesy. Uh, the little ward over the wall. Now we just gets. Uh, yeah, no credit to L. She's um she survived the laning phase against Ari and actually came out on top because she certainly could the Ari. So I think L's done exactly what she needed to on this to get ahead on the zigs, and I think really Blue Beer Boom has needed that zigs ahead to make this team comp work. So well done then. Yep, it was kind of their their ticket to to turret pushing. Um, yes, yeah, absolutely. It was a it was a ticket to a siege, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, which is definitely what they're looking for at this point. Um, I think also their ticket to a lot of the team fights as well, because um, that poke before the fights is really sort of hindering teammates back to front team fight because those bombs can hit the back line, which they've done quite a few times. Yeah, it does feel like Arthraxia <laughs> seems to be eating those uh, with unnerving accuracy. Um, so next on the list for Blue Bin Boom is I think they they're not going to be pressured into doing the Baron because they're so far ahead they can afford to put set in that bot lane to take that inhibitor. Nobody's going to be able to stop the set in the bot lane, so they can just do this Baron dance. And as soon as somebody shows in bot lane, um, I think that Baron's pretty much free for them. As uh, an army has to flash away there after eating eating a bomb too many. Uh, that is the misfortune all down though. It is worth noting, Ursa doesn't have teleport at the moment, whereas Sap does on the Dr. Mundo. Yeah, I think teammate need to pull the trigger in the next sort of 30 seconds on somebody. They need to use the fact Misfortune's ults down, or use the fact there's no TP on bot lane. Yeah, uh, they, they need, they need to make a very decisive call. Clear this out quickly, uh, leave Mundo down here uh, to push out a bit maybe, or, or leave him mid lane perhaps, uh, and then Try and look for a five v four, a four v four mid where you have the TP advantage coming in. As long as you don't get. I just, uh, I just want to throw it out there. Um, if you push X and just look at the gold difference in AD carries. Yeah, that is that's pretty gross. That is nearly double, <laughs> a couple hundred that, off double. That is six thousand gold. Yeah, that's disturbing. Yeah, and now Mundo, you know, we said we want to see him down here, but is there actually much he can do against this this set? No, no, set's built for the split push. He's got me for Trinity Force, he's got the Phantom Dancer. It, I mean, it does still look like the Cleavers are doing some damage. He's got the, he's got the Executioner's Blade, which is quite vital as well, though. Oh. So there's going to be very little healing on the Mundo. So Baron started up, Zig's kind of acting Gatekeeper in the mid lane. It doesn't look like a uh, teammate know anything about this. Um, they're in fact going to look go to the bot side and maybe look for a pick on the set. It's kind of a consolation. If they land the Qs, they can definitely chase them down. We'll see now, they've not brought any of their damage along, but the bubble from Nami, uh, 
missed again on the bind from Ivan, but it is enough in the end to take him down. Uh, Nami, I, I does do a surprising amount of damage, uh, except uh, the Note Treads being the only MR, or <laughs> to be honest, the only defensive stats mm, he has mm, at mm. all, really. I mean, in some respects, I would have liked to have seen Urza stay alive then to keep the Baron buff. I don't think it's going to matter in the long run, to be honest, but it did stick with Baron, so there's something in it. I think teammate are going to have to win back-to-back -back team fights now, probably for the next 10 minutes before they get back into this game. So they're going to have to be very, very sharp on their engages if they're looking to get back in this game. Yeah, blue buff picked up by Six. Ellie, you're going to be <laughs> happily, happily chunking down for the whole of this siege. Um, this may well be where the, where it kind of ends as Thresh. Going to catch the Ivern. Misfortune there with the Ziggs. Don't know what Ivan was doing all the way out there, I guess, trying to get some vision down. But this dragon I think up, prepping for this Elder Soul, yeah. I, I genuinely don't think they need to worry, though, because I there's very few people on Bloom and Boomers that are going to use a Cloud Soul. I mean, you think Misfortune doesn't move during her ult. Ziggs doesn't really need to speed up on his ult. Thresh, his box, doesn't really do much of a speed up. Does the it, only person you're going to have to worry about is the set. Does it give you cooldown? It gives you a little bit, yeah, but the, the primary buff is that you get 50% movement speed for 4 seconds after you cast a knot. Yeah. So it's you want it on champion. Right. Mundo is a hand. Oh, comes out, and it's Tarek's here. They feel like they could have just walked yeah. out of that one. Um, yeah. Instead of trying to heal their way through it, and that did not work out for them. <laughs> no. At all. You're not going to heal your way through a 906. No. And so that's 30 seconds with the grey screen for the Nami. And the Zix. He's going to obnoxiously push forwards with a blue buff, with a cloud soul. His ult's already halfway down. As the Thresh hook lands onto the center, and most probably that is her death. As the Ziggs bomb comes through, Ari trying to run for the hills. As Mundo gets Suplex back. I'm not sure what actually caught the Ari there, but I don't think she was getting away either way. And the inhibitor goes down. This is most likely game for the blue bit boomers. 30 second death times. Ari the only one up. Uh, we'll see what she manages to do, but the GG's are coming out in the chat. Down goes the Nexus. Woo! That was quite the well commanding game. I mean, it's nice Blue Beam Boomers are going to win at least one game this week. So, congratulations on them. Um, they're oh. about to get dumpstered in the next one. Oh, that's interesting. You wouldn't have to know who they're playing, would you, Adam? Oh, well, God, no. I mean, whoever they're playing, I'm sure they're going to lose to. Because I've heard they're against a really good team. Yeah. <laughs> 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 of course, uh. our next game will be... Uh, not be Team Washed Up versus Blue no. Boomers, although that will be happening uh, elsewhere. We will be Period Drama versus Free Agents. Um, no, you will. You got any any quick remarks for that match coming up before, before we had a break? I think Free Agents are going to desperately need that win because Free Agents are looking to crack the top two. They're only one win away from the, from the top two places. Um, Period Drama are looking to play upset because in the next two weeks, they have all of the top three teams. So... Free agents really need a win there if they're going to look to break that that um, into a semi-final buys. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking I'm looking towards uh, period drama for an upset. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we we can run through the. I'm sure people are familiar with how the playoffs are going to look later, how the, the kind of format works. Um, so I'll let you I'll let you jump off, Adam. I'll let you get to your team. Thank you. and some rousing speeches, I'm sure. <laughs> Band six. Uh, all right. Cool. Catch you later, Rob. Thank you. Bye. Cheers, Adam. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to head to a quick break then. Uh, and after that, we'll catch Period Jama versus Free Agents. See you soon.